All right, Bill, Forza Horizon 4 is out now it on is, Xbox yeah. One and PC. Uh, it's obviously a huge open world, half arcadey, half sim driving game, which, of, yeah. which opens up comparisons to The Crew 2, which launched earlier on this year. We've both been playing a bunch of Forza and have played a bunch of The Crew 2. Um, when it comes to the world, which I think is the most striking thing about each of them, obviously you've got USA in the Crew 2 and the UK, or Britain more specifically, in Forza. How do you think those two worlds compare? I guess the biggest difference straight away is the size. So the Crew 2 being set in the United States, a massive country, and it is a massive map, um, compared to Forza Horizon 4's Britain, which is um, less of a sort of imitation of the actual place, but more of a best hits highlights <laughs> of parts of Britain. And for me, the main difference is that trying to make such a big map, it's spread a bit thin. Um, whereas in Forza Horizon, it's, it's small, but it's very detailed. Mm. And for me, it just feels more like a real place. Yeah, no, I agree with you. It kind of has the the themes and the look of Britain without really like London isn't in the map, you know. And no. it's like there's there's no sort of like well, I think Edinburgh's in there, isn't it? Edinburgh's the big city, yeah. Yeah, and then you've got parts of the Lake, Lake District and Northern England. Yeah, from but what we can tell, there's yeah. there, there aren't so many. Whereas like in the Crew too, you've got New York and Las Vegas and and Los Angeles, and there are like landmarks in there, which it, the Forza doesn't do quite so much of. Um, but why? then does Forza feel more of a detailed world to you? What, what is it about that world that makes it feel more detailed and more real? It's odd, I, I had a very emotional reaction to this game just playing it because obviously we are from Britain mm. and I grew up driving around country lanes that feel very similar to what's in Horizon 4. So it does feel more lifelike and more alive mm. than the Crew 2's USA, which is massive and it's very cool how it has a real-time map in the Crew 2, so you can be driving your car and zoom out and slowly zoom out and zoom out and zoom out, and it's like a real-time map, and you can go and drop and say, I want to go to New York, and then you're just instantly in New York City. Mm. Um, and it zooms in on the map, and you can see your car in Times Square, for example. Um, so it, it's like you're actually sightseeing the US. However, there's something about it that just doesn't feel real. It kind of feels to me like a museum or like a gallery, you know, everything's sort of yeah. like set up for you to look at rather than really being able to interact with. I think Forza's world enables you to go fast. It sort of encourages speed and a little bit reckless driving, which is fun. Hmm. Um, and this isn't just something from the crew too, but it, in that game, when you hit a wall, it does feel like you do stop solid. Um, whereas in Forza, it's a lot more forgiving. And it's actually quite fun to just drift around a corner of a country lane and take out a few bricks from a wall, um, smash down a fence. Um, mm. And you can get away with a lot more than you can in not just the crew too, I suppose, but in a lot of other racing games. And the crew too, to be fair, we talk about the cities a lot because they, in, in our minds, those are like the big parts of it. But there are some really cool elements as well. Like there's a lot to uncover, but I don't think the game really helps you find them. So it was like, I want to go to the Grand Canyon. Not being from America, I can't pinpoint it straight away. I know roughly yeah. where it is. So I'm like zooming in and looking for it. And yeah, if you find the right place on the map, it's there. From the very little that I've played, the Crew 2 doesn't build hugely on what was already there in the first one. It's, you know, it's just America again, right? Yeah. Whereas, obviously with Forza, it's a completely different setting. You've gone from, I think it was Australia, wasn't it? Yeah. In Horizon 3, you've gone from Australia to Britain, which is hugely different landscape, hugely different art style and aesthetic, and hugely different roads to race on, really. And of course, we got the seasons. Yeah, uh, exactly. Four seasons, which totally changed the map. Yeah. Um, and I think that that's seen as a bit of a gimmick or like something, you know, you read in the marketing, like it's got four seasons. Mm. We've, seen, we've seen different weather and times of year in games before, but actually the way the game works and progresses and uh, at, at, you get to a point where it does start shifting week to week uh, on seasons, um, it really does change the map. Yeah, it like, massively does. Yeah. And actually, you know, it's like, oh, winter, that's not going to be as nice as summer, but actually it looks stunning 
and feels amazing to drive around because you're just drifting around snow, snowy mountains and uh, icy roads and you're like, oh, that lake is frozen now, so now mm. I can drive on it. So that actually, to Forza Horizon 4's credit, does do a lot to make, um, even though it's a smaller map, it freshens it up more often than you think. Yeah, and of course Forza wins this round because it's got roundabouts in it. And any game that has roundabouts <laughs> in it wins my vote. At the roundabout, take the second exit. But of course, the important thing in a driving game, Bill, is how they feel to cars. drive. Cars! Yeah, the cars themselves, right? Uh, in, in your opinion, which, which game feels better, do you think? Because in my mind, like Forza, I don't think the Crew 2 feels bad, but Forza, at least in my sort of more casual, focused mind, I would say Forza feels more satisfying to actually drive a car in. The Crew 2 is definitely more arcadey. Mm. Um, Forza Horizon is still an arcade driving game. But you can definitely feel the sort of heritage of its driving sim background with Forza Motorsport. But yeah, I guess big differences driving wise, uh, the Crew 2 has boost, so you have nitrous or nitro. And I did miss that in Forza. Mm. I was like, oh, I'm going to press X to boost. Oh, no, I can't. So that is fun. That is fun to do. Um, See, I, I, don't, I don't find the boost in the Crew 2 that fun. It doesn't feel as fast as it should, I suppose. Mm. Um, what the Crew 2 doesn't have, which Forza does, is Rewind, which yeah. is massive. I think every modern racing game should have Rewind, mainly because it just shows that the game respects your time as a player. Yeah. Um, there are so many times when you've been right at the end of a race and you crash, you make a stupid mistake. Mm. And yes, that could be the player's fault, but it means you've lost that whole race's progress a yeah. lot of the time, whereas Forza has Rewind. With the Crew 2, you can change into, yeah. you can magically warp into a plane or a boat. Um, how did those two types of vehicles feel to you in the Crew? Initially, I'll be honest, I did write them off. I was like, it's a racing game, but racing boats and planes isn't fun. For me, at least, I'm mm. more of a car person. I love cars and I want to get my Nissan GTR um, and drive around the world. Like, I want to drive my favourite cars. Mm. Um, but actually, once I started using those and realising how quickly you can switch between the, th the three main types, I was having a lot of fun and I was finding scenarios that you can have in the crew too that are unrivaled you can't do in any other game so i could be driving my car through times square and then i go off a ramp transform into a plane fly around the empire state building and then drop into the water transform into a speedboat and then drive around the statue of liberty mm. and that is a really cool moment that you can do all around the map and you can just decide like I'm a bit bored of driving, I might just fly. To the Crew 2's credit, that is really cool. Um, yeah, um, and it, that, that moment where you switch, it, it, it is impressive. Yeah, it yeah. does feel cool to suddenly, like you say, switch into a completely different vehicle type and suddenly you're flying through the air or, or you know swimming through the sea. That is cool, but what I would say is that, especially the boat, I don't find the boat satisfying at all. I find the boat's really like lethargic and like like you're like you're driving through treacle or something. I don't know. I just really don't find them fun. The planes I think are actually surprisingly fun. I I was the same as you, I sort of initially wrote them off. And then you get into a plane and actually it's quite fun to, to control a plane. The thing with the crew too is that it feels almost like oh compare it to an all you can eat buffet. Yeah. It's like <laughs> You have all this selection and all this choice of different types of racing events and you know you can do rally or street races or and that's before you even get onto the planes and the boats yeah. and everything there's so much choice and so much selection it's constantly bombarding you with things to do like hey look at this race you can do hey look at this place you can discover and that's great but it's all to distract you from the fact that none of it is actually in my opinion that great and obviously then you've got in forza the equivalent of the, the changing vehicles thing is the fact that you've got the different seasons, which I know we touched on them earlier, but you that does change the way the game feels, right? Absolutely, yeah. And like, you know, if it's if it's snowy, it's massively different to handle a, a car in in that weather or if it's raining or whatever than if it's dry and you're on tarmac. Yeah. Another thing that both games have, um, in Forza Horizon it's showcases. Um, the Crew 2 does have a, a similar event, but it's like 
we're showing off what this game can do. Um, in Forza Horizon, it's the showcase events. So you might race a hovercraft or mm. you might uh, race a train to Edinburgh. You were saying to me like you love Top Gear, like the old Top Gear where they would mm. um, have those races against like people or bullet, train or or bullet trains yeah, yeah. and it feels like it's that but the video game version yeah. and they are amazing they are a real spectacle um the crew 2 has events where you have to use all three uh boat plane car mm. but it just feels like you're chasing checkpoints it, it never really feels as amazing as it does in forza horizon yeah So having said all that, Bill, if I've got $60, 40 pounds in my pocket, which game do you think I should go out and buy? Honestly, I think it's Forza Horizon 4. It just feels very, very refined um, and fun to play. It just feels like a world I want to explore, um, not just because it's the, the Great Britain and I live here and mm. it's very nostalgic, but it just feels like a, the better experience. Yeah, absolutely. And it's got roundabouts, right? Which is the, oh, the key roundabouts. point. I think we can all agree on that. Yeah. Um, whereas the Crew 2, you know, I don't want to completely write it off because it, it does still have its merits, oh, yeah, right? For sure. yeah. and, and obviously, Forza is a console exclusive. So for anyone who doesn't have an Xbox One or, or a PC, you know, the Crew 2 is still a worthy it's addition. It's still a lot of fun, yeah. yeah. And you have planes and boats and hovercrafts and motorbikes and there's a lot of variety there, and you can still have a lot of fun in that world, especially if you go online with a bunch of mates, and you just go exploring and find fun things to do. All right, guys, thanks for watching. That was our take on Forza Horizon 4 versus The Crew 2. Let us know what you think on the two games in the comments section below, or you can come and yell at us on Twitter. I'm at Dare Said. I'm The Quiff is Dead. Remember to watch Versus every Thursday on GameSpot. Drive safe. <laughs> oh, no, that's the worst. <laughs> no, I liked it. <laughs>